Hello and welcome to another episode of Rio's How-To Videos. My name's Simon Gorsworth and I'm out on these beautiful flats here, wade fishing. And today's episode is how to fish for bonefish, but wade fishing. And I like wade fishing particularly because it's kind of that stalker hunter element. You have a little bit more freedom walking around trying to spot some fish. Even if you've got a guide with you, he's spotting for fish. You just have that element of randomness that I love in fishing. Whereas on a boat, you're kind of just been waiting to be pushed onto fish. So for me, wade fishing is absolutely the, the best way to go fly fishing, uh, and particularly on flats like this. As normal, when we do these episodes, we are going to talk about the gear first. I've just got a regular eight weight rod here, and I've got an eight weight reel balanced on that rod. And if you haven't seen our episode, then we do an episode of how to rig for bonefish, and that's a good episode to watch to get an idea of what gear to take. On the reel here, I've loaded up with our Rio Bonefish Quick Shooter, and I like that line when I'm wading flats, because when you're wading, you're lower down, and generally you're not going to see fish at any kind of distance. And that means you're making close range casts. And the Bonefish Quick Shooter is front loaded, it loads at close, close range, it's got a short head so it's a perfect line if you're wading the flats. When you're wading flats you always want to take your gear with you because you don't want to leave anything on the bank or on the shore or in the boat like that because what happens if you need to change your fly so you carry your fly box with you you always want to make sure that's in your pocket you want to make sure your leaders and tippet are with you so that you've got everything handy just in case and of course you carry your set of tools on you. I've got my nippers here my hook sharpener my forceps here and I've got my pliers attached to myself here so my, my gear is with me and then on the end of my, my feet obviously I've got some wading shoes and I would highly recommend you wade flats with wading shoes. As tempting as it is to go with bare feet, the important thing about the flats, you might stand on a shell, you might stand on a stingray, that happens, you might stand on a sea urchin or something and you just don't want to cut your feet. So just for a little common sense, have something on your feet to protect your feet as you're wading. And then just whilst we're talking about gear, before we wade out in the flats, Saltwater reels, a good saltwater reel should have a good drag system. This is Sage's Spectrum Max and there's a drag system on here, a number drag system. This is set to number eight. I like a number eight drag for stripping line off. It makes it real easy to strip line off so I can strip it off real quickly. But do make sure before you make that cast, you dial in to a, a number that you're comfortable to play a fish on. Right, there's a little more tension on that, it's a lot harder, and that means if I hook a good bonefish, there's a lot of tension on that, I can control the fish a bit better. It's a thing a lot of people forget, is they back the drag off to strip line off, and then they go fishing and they hook a fish, and then get spooled because it or overruns because they haven't tightened the drag up. So once you get the line out ready to cast, tighten up the drag and get yourself ready for hooking that fish. So, that's the gear, that's the setup. Let's pop out on this flat and see what we can find. All right, we're out here, found this beautiful flat. We're going to wade down. We've got our guide, Kainla, he's going to keep an eye out for us on the fish. And uh, as I said, when you get out there, you want to make sure your drag is a nice and easy set. You want to strip off your casting distance, plus a little bit more, just in case. Get your fly out, get unhooked. Everything gets ready before you're ready to go. And always make sure that you have enough line to make a cast. So when you start off, you're only going to have a few feet of fly line hanging outside the rod, and that's just too short to make a cast. So before you start wading around, make sure you've got at least a rod length of line. I like more like a rod length and a half of line. And that one wants to trail behind you. You want to keep the fly in your hand ready and your line pinched like this. So this is me ready. As I'm walking around the flats, I'm going to trail this line behind me and I walk. And this is called the ready position. So now I'm absolutely ready. As soon as I spot a fish or a guide spots a fish, ready to go. And as you're walking the flats, obviously you're looking for fish. Hopefully you can see a fish, but of course you've got a guide with you. And the guide's got way better eyes, way better knowledge. You always listen to the guide. He's looking for fish, scanning left and right, and he's going to give you some directions. He's going to tell you how far it is and what angle. Basically 12 o'clock is straight in front of you, so if he says there's a cast 30 feet 12 o'clock, cast straight in front of you. If he says cast 40 feet at 10 o'clock, you cast at roughly 10 o'clock based on the angle that you're wading. So listen to your guide, he's got good eyes, he's got much better knowledge, and of course he's going to tell you how to fish the fly, how fast to strip it, when to stop, when to strip it, when to speed up and stuff like that. Really important when you're stripping that you keep your rod low, almost on the water surface and pointing straight at your fly line like this. What you don't want is a curve to develop between your rod and line because you'll never set the hook and uh, you'll be a fraction slow and you'll not just get good hook penetration. So whatever happens with your line, you want to swing your rod, keep a direct straight path to the fly line and keep your rod tip low. You see that? It's not moved. It's That's on it? the bottom. Yeah. On the white? Right? Yeah, the head is Facing like this. this way? Yeah. Yes, I see it. Oh, there's nothing better than seeing a tailing bone on a flat. Oh gosh, look at that tail. Right, there's a bonefish there. 
A little short here. He's coming towards it. There he is. Yes. Good on ya. All right. Beautiful. Good eyes. Clear the line. All right. We're clear. Nicely spotted. Oh man. Thank you. Good eyes, man. That's fantastic. Sometimes you just get lucky on these flats. You get the tails come up like that. Boy, was that good to see those tailing bones. And then you've got to make the cast and then everything else has got to go to plan. And luck. So I'm keeping my rod nice and high here just so the line doesn't get wrapped around any turtle grass or weed. But then you've got also the option of moving your rod left or right to steer the fish, put some side pressure on. I love these fish. God, they're so hard fighting, so strong. Sometimes you've got to chase after them. If you lose a lot of line, especially when you get on the backing, it's good to walk towards the fish and recover some line. I certainly don't like backing off my reel. I said get it on the reel so you've got fly line on the reel. Less things can go wrong. Backing gets wet and tangled. So get it on the reel so that's not going to happen. Oh yeah, he's coming into shallow water. He doesn't like coming into shallow water. That's a good sized bone. Oh yeah, lovely. Oh, well done Kayla. Thanks so much for learning that. Beautiful job mate. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. That is absolutely awesome. How about that? Walking flats, hunting, tailing fish, making a cast, getting the grab. Can't be much better fun than that. Even on a cloudy day like that. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this, this episode, which was how to fish for bonefish on a flat wading. And if you did, check out the Rio website, www.rioproducts.com on Rio TV, and you'll find a whole pile of these Rio how-to videos. Thanks ever so much for watching.